All right, it is grand final week and with that, comes the Brownlow medal. Now in this video, I'm going to offer some pretty quick fire predictions about how the Brownlow medal count is going to go. I would have loved to get this video out a little bit earlier, but it's been a very busy week or two on this channel. So what I'm gonna do in this video, I'm gonna predict every club's leading Brownlow vote getter, and then I'm gonna finish the video predicting my top five in order and the eventual Brownlow medalist. So I'm gonna offer one player from each team, and I'm gonna rank it more or less in general order of favoritism without it being absolutely perfect. So we're gonna start at the top, and there's three major contenders, at least due to the uh, betting odds. So I'm gonna say that with an absolute slam dunk, Nick Dacos is gonna be Collingwood's best vote getter, Patrick Cripps is gonna be Carlton's best vote getter, and Lockie Neal would be Brisbane's best vote getter. So those are all pretty obvious, and none of those have a real contender for somebody getting more votes than them from the same team on the actual Brownlow count. These three are considered the major three contenders, in particular Dacos and Cripps, as I, when I last looked at it, were equal favorites. Lockie Neal was a still a fair way back in third. So we'll move down to some other contenders. Bontempelli should get the most votes for the Western Bulldogs. You think Trelaw did have a very good season, probably unlikely to actually poll more votes than Bonds and Pelly on the evening. At Sydney, this one is a little bit more even. And both of these guys have been considered maybe Brownlow contenders at the start of the year between Heaney and Errol Gould. And certainly Heaney has been considered a Brownlow contender. Of course, he's ineligible after being suspended. And then his form slump later in the year means he probably won't get all the way there. So I'm actually gonna say Errol Goulden is gonna be Sydney's best vote getter. I don't know how likely it is he really gives the award a shake. He probably wasn't as consistent or prolific in season 2024 compared to say, was it last year he polled extremely well. So I'm gonna go with Gould in there, bearing in mind he did have a good run of form. I feel like when Sydney was dropping games and therefore it might hurt his votes. So either way, I'm doubling down on that. For Essendon, Zach Merritt is a good chance to maybe give the top five a good shake. Uh, but as far as anyone else at Essendon getting more votes, there's virtually no chance you'd think. Uh, that one's a fairly big slam dunk. And Fremantle also have another guy who I think could give the top five a shake. He had a really good start to the year. Both Fremantle faded away late and he, I don't know if he faded away as such, but other guys probably also might have taken some votes off him. So I'm talking about Caleb Sarong being Fremantle's best vote getter. Andy Brayshaw and Hayden Young also could be in the mix there. I think Hayden Young, I think towards the back end of the season, or at least in the second half of the year, really emerged as a primary piece of that midfield. But either way, I think Sarong will have him on votes. For GWS, this one's fairly obvious. Tom Green, again, he's a fair way down their order. He could give the top five a shake, but I don't think would be a massive contender to actually win the award. But as for other Giants players getting votes, um, Jesse Hogan probably would, would, given sometimes key forwards when they keep bags of goals do tend to get votes. So I don't think it would be enough to get more than Tom Green. I think that one is a fairly safe bet. Now, Port Adelaide could be a little bit more even. There's three gun midfielders here. And I think particularly Jason Horn Francis, who is not my prediction, his end of the season, in particular the last three weeks, will see this count between the top three Port players go pretty close. But Zach Butters was all Australian, and I think over the stretch was probably a little bit more consistent than Rosie, and therefore is my prediction for the power. For Adelaide, I think there's one clear choice here. We know that this award is biased towards midfielders and Jordan Dawson probably got the most votes for Adelaide, you'd think. Isaac Rankin, you know, not only is he ineligible, but I think he might be the second biggest contender. Not only is he ineligible, but probably, I think he'll get some votes, but I, I can't imagine enough to really challenge Jordan Dawson as their best vote getter. For the Gold Coast Suns, again, this is not super obvious because you had Flanders have a good year, you had Noah Anderson have a good year, but I think I'm gonna go safe and go Matthew Rao because early on in the season in particular, I felt like Gold Coast really won some games where Matthew Rao was absolutely prolific and one of the, I think the number one clearance player for like nearly half a season. And while he didn't continue that form throughout the entire season, I could see him banking some early votes in Gold Coast wins. St Kilda, again, this one is probably, there's probably one bloke um, and he's not even a midfielder. I'd say Rowan Marshall. I don't think St Kilda's midfield, any particular midfielder contributed long enough to really give this award a shake. Roland Marshall, however, is super consistent, wins a lot of hit outs, wins a lot of possessions, and I think should comfortably be St Kilda's best vote getter. Uh, for North Melbourne, this one's probably less obvious. I think I'm gonna go safe and go Harry Sheasel. LDU did have some really good games there. They probably won't either of them get a massive amount of votes because of the lack of games that North Melbourne won. But Harry Sheasel, you know, I think he missed out on All Australian, didn't he? But whether North Melbourne were playing well or not, Harry Sheasel was 
prolific and uh, I'd imagine gets the most votes for North Melbourne. Hawthorne's a funny one where they finished fifth and then made a semi-final and yet probably don't have any major a Brownlow medal contender. And in terms of like individual midfielders, well, Will Day, in my opinion, is probably their best midfielder. Didn't play much of the season, or well, played like half a season when he joined. I think he missed the first couple of months. Then there's Newcomb and Warple, and I think Newcomb probably gets the most votes for Hawthorne this year. Geelong is also not very obvious here. Now, there are probably two major contenders here between Max Holmes and Jeremy Cameron. Those are my two bets to be very close to being the Geelong's best vote getter. Max Holmes being a bit of a midfielder defender could could easily get enough votes here and would be justifiably the best vote getter. In terms of actually getting votes though, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes players who have a breakout year, there tends to be a lag between them getting votes and their actual performance. So I'm gonna maybe take a punt and say Jeremy Cameron, who did have a fantastic year, does get the most votes for the Cats. Melbourne is an interesting one as well. So it probably would have been Petrarca, but he missed half a season. So I'm actually thinking it might be Max Gorn in the end. He is a Ruckman. They don't tend to pull a lot of votes, but I feel like he has polled fairly well in the past. Um, so not enough to get anywhere near the award, but all Australian Ruckman, pretty consistent. There was a bit of a form slump this year, but statistically was outstanding. And I think, I think Mac Gorn will just get the most Demons votes. Then you'd left with Richmond and West Coast. And I think these ones are both somewhat obvious. I mean, Taranto probably got the most votes for Richmond there. Again, they were decimated by injury. So no one's going to get a lot of votes. They also only won uh, two games this year. And then at West Coast, you're probably thinking Harley Reid or Elliot Yo. Harley Reid's also ineligible, um, not that he was going to win this award anyway, but I'd probably say Elliot Yo. Yo was certainly more consistent, and while consistency is not necessarily a good measure of who's going to get the most votes, because it's really, particularly when you're talking about teams that didn't win a lot of games, it's going to be the players who played best in games their team actually won. I'm going to say Elliot Yo. So that is every team's likely most vote getter, um, at least my opinion, but I think it, a lot of that is pretty non-controversial. By all means, let me know in the comments if you agree. However, I'm going to give you my top five in order now. So in fifth spot, I've got Errol Goulden actually taking fifth. We know he's a prolific vote getter in the past. You know, I think he shocked a few by how well he polled last year. He had two games of over 40 touches this year, three over 35. He's the number two inside 50 player in the competition. What might work against him is he's the number one turnover player in the competition, but I'm pretty sure Buddy Franklin led the league in clangers the year he won the Coleman in 2008. So Goulden, uh, considering his ability to get votes, I'm going to say he makes the top five. Number four is Bonton Pelly. Very few people, uh, other than Bulldogs fans, would be happier than me to see Bonton Pelly win a Brownlow medal. He's probably one of my favorite players, and I do think he is probably the best player in the game, but in terms of actual votes, I'm not sure he's really going to give it a shake this year. So I'm going to say fourth, and possibly with a bit of a gap to the top three. And I think the top three, well, my opinion is not worth a whole lot. We see a lot of Brownlow vote surprises and a lot of games where votes are distributed strangely. But I'm going to say the top three are pretty much going to go as expected. So I am going to mix up the order of the rest. In number three, I'm going to go Patrick Cripps. Patrick Cripps could easily win the award. And I'm going to say it's tight between the top three. He's a $2.50 equal favorite. Best clearance player in the game statistically. Average 29 disposals and eight clearances a game and was top five in disposals all year. So Patrick Cripps could win the award, but I'm going to say that Lockie Neal sneaks in between him and the actual winner. Uh, he is an $8 third favorite, but Lockie Neal routinely polls a little bit better than expected. Of course, he won it last year when few expected him to be a serious contender. I don't need to sell you on Lockie Neal. I think he did have a, probably a better year than he did last year. So that by that logic, I think he might just sneak up and cause a little bit of an upset to finish in second. But the winner this year, I think, is Nick Dacos. He polled better than expected last year and possibly could have won if it weren't for injury. And yet, I think, went up several gears this year in terms of his ability to not only win the ball on the outside like he was previously doing, but we do see this award a lot go to inside balls who are involved you know, at the coal face. You know, Patrick Cripps and Lockie Neal, they're the last two winners, right? Dacos kind of added that to his game, and he was already a good vote getter, and there's a lack of competition for votes there for Collingwood. Now, they missed out on finals, but Carlton only finished a couple spots ahead. And what works in Neal's favor is they won more games than the other two opponents there. So I'm going to say that Nick Dacos takes out his first Brownlow medal. Now I do think on the AFL website, he's only expected to poll three votes in the first seven rounds. So if he polls better than expected in that first seven rounds, then you think he might win it because they also have him as an equal winner with Patrick Cripps. But there you go, guys. That is just a bit of fun. Just some fun Brownlow predictions. Hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next one.
Tschüss.